we're doing the 3D print video. And uh, while we're looking at the video of this print, I'm going to be removing it from the glass plate and you're going to be able to watch that. So let's turn that uh, time lapse on. And let's see if we can make it just a little bit bigger for you. That should do. And uh, switch cameras here. There we go. Now to, to remove it from the plate, I use glass cleaner. So there we go. And that needs a couple of minutes to set. And so the video finished, and this should be almost ready to come off. Let's see, find the edge here. There we go. The uh, glass cleaner helps loosen the tape off the glass. And helps break the bonds between the tape and the filament. So it just separates much easier. So we've got it off of our build plate. Now we need a paper towel to put it on and let the paper towel do its thing. Soak up the excess glass cleaner. We'll grab another paper towel here. And we're going to remove the other pieces of tape. Because even if you think you've got all the Windex or glass cleaner off, you may be surprised to find that some did work its way under the other two pieces. And if it did, they're not going to be down solid. See, just lifts right off. And you can see there's some glass cleaner right here at this edge. So let's clean that off. There we go. And even though this one's stuck down, I'm still going to remove it because I've had pieces that I thought were down solid 
but then I look at it at the print bed after it's been printing for about 15 minutes and uh oh the piece I thought that was that was down solid is lifting off the glass so now let's get our tape and uh, re-prepare the glass print bed and I know that uh, 3D printers don't need the painter's tape anymore, that there are better solutions. But I think it makes a really good contrast in color to the orange filament that I always buy. So that, that's why I'm just staying with the painter's tape. The heated bed on the printer, the part that's right below the glass, is uh, a uh, reddish orange as well, so that's why I don't just use another covering and then the and then just print on top of that need something that helps the uh, color of the filament to stand out and the blue does that quite nicely and if you happen to like the, the uh, tape to be in nice straight lines, like I do, you've kind of got to work at it. But once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard to manage. In fact, it becomes one of the easiest things that there is about this. If your tape happens to stick to itself like mine did here, you may have to re have to get another piece. It, but it all depends on where the self-sticking happened. This piece it just happened at this end, so everything's fine with the rest of it. But if you get some that sticks from one side to the middle, then you've got to get another piece of tape because it's not going to be a flat uh, level surface anymore. There's going to be some bulging happening on the tape itself. And bulging tape in this case is a bad thing. Although I really can't think of where bulging tape would be a good thing. In any circumstance. So there is our taped down uh, print bed. Now we need to remove the excess off of the edges here. So I take my X-Acto blade and just run it down, run it down, run it down, run it down on that side.
flip it over and do the same on the other side. Now, once we've got that done, you may find that the tape wants to lift up off. And if that happens, you're going to have problems getting it to stay. So what I do is I take a just a regular cardboard box that's not folded up into a box yet. And I just uh, open it up a little bit. Take the pane of glass that has the tape on it and slide it in between the two pieces of cardboard that make up the box, the two halves of the box. And I find that the pressure of the just flattened box is enough after about an hour to fully adhere the tape down to the glass. So that's that done. Now, getting back to our printed chain link, we need to get it separated here. Which is uh, going to require the needle nose pliers. Hang on. I had them here. Right by me, but just a few steps away. All right, got my pliers and my safety go goggles. This always comes out. I'm always having to put it back in. So I will do that right now. Okay, come on. There we go. Got it fed through one way, now to feed it back through the other. There we go. Now, put these on. It's important to always maintain safety when you're doing this. I don't need stuff flying into my eyes. So we're just going to pull this base off. There we go, it's coming. And there we go. So now the base is removed. Still got some glass cleaner in there. And now we're going to remove the support pieces that holds the one piece up. There. Finish this up here. There we go. And that is how we get 
that done. So now it looks ready for heating with the soldering iron, but I'm not going to bring that out. It would you guys have already seen me do that before, so I'm not gonna not gonna give you that video again. And that's pretty much gonna be it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I look forward to the next video session. That's all for this session of Polygonal Art with Juracy. If you enjoyed what you saw, how about giving this video a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos from me. In the video description below, you'll find my Patreon link. Feel free to check it out. Now, on to the credits.